GI Combat number one, written by JT Kroll, art by Ariel Olivetti. I have a little bit of explaining to do on this one. So, uh, Men of War was a uh, comic that just ended, and I, more or less this is replacing it. But the way that comic was structured was it had a main story and then a backup story. The backup story was a significantly smaller portion of the book, and the main story was the main story. As such, I covered the main story when I was talking about the numbered issues, but the backup stories I saved for week fives. This book is pretty much split right down the middle. There's a first story, which is the war that time forgot, and then there's a second story, which is the unknown soldier. It would be a disservice to both stories for me to try to cram both of them into my time talking about it. So I'm going to go ahead and classify The Unknown Soldier as a backup story and talk about it on week fives. But just know that it's not really that short and this is more or less an anthology of two different stories. So this, the numbered issues are going to be strictly talking about The War That Time Forgot. If you want to check out Unknown Soldier, check out every time that we have a week five. So, ignoring all of that, getting into this, the word of time forgot, we have in the Sea of Japan what seems to be a military vessel and a man who is not named in this issue, mind you, not because it's a secret. I think they just forgot to give him a speech bubble where his name shows up, but his name is Stevens. So Stevens is talking to his family, his daughter and wife, uh, on a pretty much a Zoom call, and she's trying to, like, get a little bit of information, just like, could you at least tell me where you are so I know you're safe or whatever? And of course, he can't give up anything for military reasons. But then uh, his friend, Elliot, who's also a crewmate, shows up and is basically like, yeah, no, we're we're working hard out here or whatever. And they have some little playful banter about Elliot waiting until his daughter's grown up, which is very creepy because she's like, one, but regardless. Um, she So they joke around for a little bit, showing that they're good with each other until finally the uh, wife and daughter have to go. And then we start the story proper. And we get a... There's an issue in North Korea. For the past 48 hours, there's been activity. Or to be more specific, there's no activity because there's a giant just hole where no satellite imagery is working. So the special forces team is going to go in and they're going to get some answers as to what exactly is happening there. They're going in with helicopters. And as they do so... They see this giant-ass lightning storm that is filled to the brim with pterodactyls. Just giant dinosaurs attacking them. And immediately, first response is they load up the miniguns and they start firing at these things. And they are doing a little bit of damage, but not enough to actually bring any of them down. So the pterodactyls start just destroying the helicopters and eating the men alive straight out of the air. The helicopter that has uh, Elliot and Stevens is mercifully... I wouldn't say saved, but not completely destroyed, but it is knocked out of the air, and they crash down onto North Korean soil and black out for a little bit. Cut to the next morning. Uh, Stevens is getting out of the wreckage, and he sees Elliot is still alive, but pretty much everyone else has died, and they have to get to some level of safety somewhere. So they start making their way through the woods, and they genuinely don't know where they are they know they were about 15 miles in where they attacked but they just have to find a clearing and then start heading south so that they can get back to friendly land um but then they start hearing rumbling and gunfire and whatnot and they think oh maybe that's an extraction team for us i don't hopeful thinking but as they uh go over the crest of the ridge they look over and they see a whole bunch of north korean tanks attacking pterodactyls, tyrannosaurus, stegosaurus, triceratops, just your general menagerie of dinosaurs. And that's it. That's where the issue ends. Um, yeah, these are going to be very fast ones because I'm only really covering half an issue. But okay, I mean, hell of a way to open it of just, hey, we're U.S. military and North Korea military versus a bunch of dinosaurs. Sure, why not? Um, to be fair, the cover pretty much gives that away, but I'm still surprised by it, nonetheless. So, art is very good. It has this, uh, it's got a painterly feel to it, but the only thing that I can really critique it for is that certain things, like when they're walking through the woods, definitely feel like they were just copy and pasted, like, forest.jpg, 
Like, it doesn't feel like they actually drew that. If they did, it's very lifelike. It's very well done. But it feels like it's just a JPEG. Um, so it kind of took me out of it just a little bit. But overall, it's an interesting start at the very least. It's just your general setup of the way mo all those, like, trap behind enemy line movies go. The difference here being is that they're dinosaurs. So I'm going to give this one a... I'll give it a 6.5. You know what? No, I'll bump it up to a 7. A lot of that is the art, because the story is bare bones as it is right now. I'm sure we'll get more character development, more of, like, what they actually have to do as things progress, but it's very basic of, like, here's just the general premise, and next issue we can get into the more specific of it. So, 7 for it right now, and hopefully it can continue.